Hello everyone, Mr. Tomacic here. Today I want to work with you on the lab called heat of combustion of food. Now when we talk about combustion, usually we think about things like you know methane and propane uh, or butane as a combustible material, but food, uh, any kind of food, for example crackers, uh, undergoes combustion when you eat it. Uh, and it's the fuel. So if you look at the label of it, you'll see that the label is going to say how many calories it has in it. All right. Now, calories is a unit for measuring heat energy or energy in general, and that's exactly what it is. So in this lab, what we're going to do is burn some food and see how much energy is given off. And we're going to use uh, the equation Q equals MC delta T to have that food uh, heat up some water in a calorimeter. All right. Before we start though, let's uh, review combustion reactions a little bit and uh, look at how food actually can undergo combustion. All right, well, now Here we're the outside porch. in the screen porch propane. lighting up the propane fire pit. Fire pit. Perfect example, uh, perfect of, example combustion of combustion, burning of propane. Here's the combustion equation for propane, C3H8. Now all combustion reactions require oxygen, and all of them are going to produce CO2 and H2O. Now in this case we're talking about propane which in this chart gives us how much energy is given off. That will be 2,219 kilojoules, and that's on a per mole basis. So for each mole of C3H8 that we consume or, or, or combust, we get 2,219 kilojoules worth of energy. Now, you can see other fuels on the chart here too as well. Food is basically the same thing. It's compounds containing carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, maybe small amounts of other stuff. But food undergoes a combustion reaction almost exactly the same as these kind of fuels here. The difference is how fast and what the material is made of. All right, in food, we got lots of different things besides just hydrocarbons there, but the reaction is very similar. If we look at the packaging for something like uh, graham crackers, on the side there's always a nutritional facts label, and it tells us right there, 130 calories. And it also tells us, you know, what a serving size is, and they say two of those full-size crackers is uh, one serving, and that has 130 calories. Now, calories just another way to measure energy, just like in joules or kilojoules. Let's review quickly what we mean by a calorie. Here's our chemistry definition of what a calorie is. It's the amount of heat needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So it's a unit for measuring heat or energy. Another unit that we often use is the joule. And the equivalence here is that 4.186 joules is equal to one calorie. Now, when it comes to food, like on the package of graham crackers, they give us the calories in the food. Now, we got to say something about this kind of calorie here because a food calorie is actually a kilocalorie. All right, so in terms of our definition of a calorie, there's a little bit of a difference between a food calorie and the definition of what a calorie is. In fact, a food calorie is really a kilocalorie. So we got to kind of keep that in mind. Sometimes when we abbreviate that as C-A-L, if we write it with a capital letter C, it's kind of a clue that we're talking about our kilocalorie. Whereas if we put it C-A-L with a lowercase c, then we're talking about the real definition of a calorie. All right, so uh, what kind of food are we gonna combust? So let's first take a look at what kind of foods can actually light on fire. Most of us are familiar that you can roast marshmallows over a fire. And the fact 
that if you're not careful, you can easily start your marshmallow on fire. Now the best way to roast marshmallows, of course, are to uh, nice and slow. But, of course, marshmallows do occasionally catch on fire and they burn. That's combustion, totally. Combustion of food right there. How about grain crackers? Can grain crackers light a fire? Let's test it and see. Alright, it appears so. Grain crackers can burn and they give off heat. It's a combustion reaction. How about Tostitos? Can Tostitos burn? Let's try. Most potato chips have some kind of oils in them, which burns quite nicely. All right, so we could burn Tostitos. All right, maybe a little bit of cashew nut. Now, most nuts have quite a bit of oil in them, and uh, they burn fairly easily as well. So we could do a cashew. For this lab, we are going to burn a Cheeto. Cheetos puffs, that is. Cheetos puffs got quite a bit of oil in them, and they burn quite nicely. So what we're gonna do is burn a Cheeto and collect the heat and see how many calories or joules are in a gram of Cheeto. For the experiment, we're going to use the pop can calorimeter, which will have some water in it. All right, let's take a look at our procedure. Number one says, in a graduated cylinder, obtain a volume of roughly 25 to 50 milliliters of water. Now, it doesn't really matter exactly how much water we have, as long as we know how much water we do have. So we're going to use about, we'll do a little bit more than 50 that much right there let's go with 52.0 milliliters so we'll write that in 52.0 milliliters now for water one milliliter is going to equal one gram so we could also write 52.0 grams of water because we're going to use that in our equation mc delta t that's the mass of the water. Now, once we burn the Cheeto, it's gonna warm up that water and the temperature will change. So, let's pour it into our calorimeter. Then we gotta put it on to the stand. Next, we have to assemble the calorimeter, which means we gotta lower the can into our aluminum foil shield. And then we're going to burn the Cheeto underneath the can. We can lift that up and set it under there. We'll just set it right there for now. All right, next, we have to prepare our Cheeto. We're going to use just a piece of Cheeto. All right, and we're gonna put it onto this little paper clip stand so that it can sit under the calorimeter. But first, we must find the mass of our Cheeto. Finding the mass of the Cheeto. 0 0.98, nope, 0.97 grams. Okay, we can write that down. Mass of the Cheeto, 0.97 grams. All right, next we gotta get the temperature in the calorimeter before we burn the Cheeto. All right, temperature of the water in the calorimeter. 
We're going to go with 22.1 degrees Celsius. Okay, we can write that in. 22.1 degrees. That's our initial temperature. Now we're going to burn the Cheeto and see how much the temperature changes for the water. At this point, we are set to put the Cheeto on fire. There it is, combustion of food. In this case Cheeto and it should start to warm up the water fairly quickly. I'm just going to let it burn until it burns out and then we'll measure the final temperature of the water. Kind of stinky. That's why we're doing it outside. Uh oh, we get some flame coming outside. Right, not good because that's experimental error. All right. That is it. Next, let's get our final temperature. All right. We're shake it up a little bit first and then get our final temperature. Looks to be. Let's go with 41.2 degrees. Okay, 41.2 degrees. We can write that in. 41.2 degrees Celsius. Now, of course, to get the change in temperature, we'll just subtract. 41.2 minus 22.1 is 19.1. 19.1 degrees Celsius. That's going to be delta T in our equation, MC delta T. All right. Next, we got to do some calculations. <laughs> 